What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about a decorator in Python which can massively speed up your code. So let us get right into it. All right, so the decorator that we're going to talk about in this video today is called the cached property decorator and it's part of a core Python package called functools. This decorator can massively speed up your code if you use it in the right way. And we're going to get right into it with a code example. I'm going to create a new file here, main.py, uh, and we're going to import it from functools import cache property. And this decorator is a variation of the property decorator, which we can use in classes to turn methods into property. So things that we don't call, but we just access as a property as an attribute. So for example, I can have a class here, let's call it expensive computation. This class has a constructor and init method here with some value as a parameter. We say self dot value equals value, for example, and then we have some method here. Uh, let's call it computation result or something like this. And all this does is it returns, I don't know, uh, something like self dot value times five, for example. And before that, we want to print here, uh, calculating results, and then we can artificially slow this down with a time sleep. So import time, and we can just say time sleep three seconds to make this a little bit slower so that it's working and then it's giving us the result. Um, and what I can do now, of course, is I can say, for example, EC equals expensive computation, and then I can just print EC uh, dot computation result, and I call this function here, I have to pass a value, let's say 10, for example, and when I run this, you can see it calculating result here, 50 is the result because 10 times five is 50. And of course, what I can do is I can also change the value. So I can do something like uh, self dot value is equal, or let's say times equals five. Uh, and then we return just self dot value. In this case, I would get the same result. But if I run this multiple times, um, I would get different results, I would get first 50. And then I would uh, get 250, I guess, if I'm not stupid right now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can do it like that as well. Now, the idea is that with the ordinary property decorator from Python, I can turn this into a property. So I can just go ahead here, and I can say at property, just a simple property here. And let's go back to the original idea where we just return the value times five. Um, now, instead of calling this as a method, what I can do is I can call it as an attribute, I can access it as a property. So in this case, it would still run the function, it would still execute the sleep and all the calculation stuff. But you can see I can access it as an attribute of the object, not as a method that I have to call using parentheses. Now, the idea is the following, and this is where the speed up happens. If you have a very comp complicated computation or something that has to access some data from an external source, if you know that your object or the result of this function, the result of this method won't change at all during the life cycle of the object, you can use a cache property. What this means is if I know that once this is calculated, it's always going to be the same thing until the object is no longer existent, and I have to create a new one. If I know that the result of this calculation will never ever change, given the circumstances. So in this case, this would mean that self dot value ne never changes. If that is a given thing, if I know that this is the case, it makes sense to use a cached property. And the reason for that is that as the name already says, it stores the result in a cache. And the next time I call the function, you can see right away, I get 50 as a result. So the first time it has to print calculating result time sleep three, so it waits three seconds, and then it returns the value. The second time and the third time I call this property, you can see I get the result immediately, I just have to wait for three seconds one time. Um, and then I get uh, the result. And then I don't have to wait anymore, because the result of this function call of the property is, uh, is already stored, and I just get the stored value. The problem with this is again, of course, if I change something, so if I say EC dot value equals, uh, for example, 100 instead of 10, and then I call the same function down here, I'm going to get the invalid result of the calculation, because now I would get actually, I would have to get 500, not 50. But I still get 50 because it's cached. And this is why you only want to use cache property if you know that the result will not change at all. 
So you want to know that during the lifetime of this object, the result of this calculation will always be the same. Once computed, I'm always going to get the same output. However, if for some reason you want to still do it, if you know changes can happen, what you can do is you can force the deletion of the cache. You can just say Dell and then EC computation result. And then you can just run this thing here again. This will clear the cache. And then when you call this attribute again, it's going to recalculate the result and you're going to get 500. So this is an abstract example here. Let's go to something more useful. Uh, for this, I have prepared a sample Flask application, nothing too fancy, uh, just a simple endpoint here. Get user, you just pass in the URL, the user ID, and then you get from this dictionary, the username and the email. Very, very simple. Um, we have an artificial slowdown here. So the idea is the user, in this case us, we send a request to this endpoint for a specific user ID. If it exists here as a key, we get the dictionary as a result. But this, of course, takes some artificial slowdown three seconds here. Uh, and we get a JSON object or we get user not found. Now, the idea is now to have a class user. And for this, again, we need to again import from func tools cache property. Um, we're going to also import requests because we, because we need to send requests. If you don't have requests on your system, just open up the command line pip or pip three install requests like this. Um, and now we can build a user class that works with cache property. So we can say user, we can say constructor here is going to take the user ID as an input self dot user ID is going to be equal to user ID. And then we also want to have an API URL, this is going to be just a, a static thing. Uh, in our case, this is going to be HTTP, and then localhost port 5000 slash users slash and then we can use here in the F string the user ID, which we just uh, passed to the constructor. So the idea is now we're going to get the user information. So we want to get the data of the user, let's say def data is going to be our um, function here. And what we want to do is we want to say print fetching user information. Then what we want to do is we want to say response is equal to requests dot get we want to get from the API URL. So from self dot API URL response raise for status. Um, so basically, we're going to get an exception if this is a not found. Uh, and we're going to just return here the response dot JSON. So this is going to give us the data is going to be this output here, this JSONified output. And what we can do now is we can also have a function username. And this username will just return self dot data. And from this the username, and then we can copy this, we can paste it down below, we can indent this, we can change this to email, and we can change this to email here as well. Now, what we need to do for this to work is we need to turn all of these into properties. So we can just go the easy way, the simple way to just say property, 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 like this. This works perfectly fine. But of course, this is the one that takes some time because we have this artificial slowdown. And in real life, you would have the connection problem. But you know that for a given user ID, you're always going to get the same uh, response, you're always going to get the same username or email unless maybe a long time has passed, and you can delete the cache. But in general, you're not going to get a different result just because you run the function again, you don't want to request the data every single time. So what you can do is you can turn this here into a cached property. And this cache property is used here. So when we use username and email, we're indirectly using this cache property here because we're accessing it. And um, now we can basically go ahead and we can create an instance of the user user equals user one, two, three, four, five, and then print username, and then user dot username. So username itself, so username and email themselves are not cache properties, they're properties, but they access data, which is a cache property. So this is what is happening here. User email, and then we can change this to email. And then we can just run this again. So let's run this. Oh, of course, the app needs to be started first. 
Now we get the user information, we should get there you go, John Doe, John Doe at example.com. And the second one was instantly there. So because it's a cached property, of course. Um, of course, this would not work if we changed user ID, because now um, the data would still be the same, it would still use the old API URL, or it would actually not use it, but it would give me the result that I would get for the old API URL. But again, we assume that once you set the user ID, you're going to keep it, or you're going to create a new object. That's the basic premise here. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.